This is a broken fang cave. I'm pretty sure some of you recognize it. Um, but yeah, we're not getting into freaking lighting templates or image spaces. This is just going to be very, very basic lighting. Um, yeah, that should, uh, should be it. So, um, yeah, with these cave entrances, you run into this problem a lot with caves. You can, a lot of vanilla caves tend to use just non-shadow omni lights. Um, I have used shadow lights here sometimes. It depends on whatever you're feeling. Um, most people just like to put a non-shadow omni light on these caves because it just gives them more budget for the rest of the cell. So that's probably what I'm going to do here. Just going to find a nice little light. I'm probably going to choose this cave sunlight here, the cave sunlight bounce. This is a very reliable light. If you want to add that to your notes or if you have notes. This is. Oop, let me just place this over here. Normally, you want to place these at the ends behind walls. There's like a little cubby area that was designed for this purpose. Bethesda normally puts this right here on top of the glow effect that's already here, and as well as the wind effects. Just gonna place that, maybe increase the brightness just a tad, adjust the scale. And that should be good. In fact, I'm actually feeling a little bit bigger on that scale, just to make it look like the light's kind of bleeding in. But you can understand, if you want to visualize the radius, I kind of showed this last time. If you press L on your keyboard, that will it'll give you a visual representation of this radius right here. Um, all right. But yeah, I think that should cover it for the lights looking somewhat natural. You probably recognize that look from the rest of the game. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. It's up to you. Um, now we're just going to do firelights. Oh, God, what is that? Now, most of the firelights in your cave are probably going to be non-shadow. Or they're going to be marked out NS. And that is most of the time a good thing. You want to use a lot of these generic non-shadow lights as much as possible to free up the budget. But you shouldn't be afraid to use your light budget, your shadow light budget at all. You do have a limit of four shadow lights and per cell. If you use room bounds to split up your cell, you can get away with more, but it's a little finicky, so your results may vary on that one. But, um, yeah, definitely you should try to use your budget as much as possible. Uh, if you have a cell with no shadow lights whatsoever or only one, you really need to go back through and then consider what are the most important parts of your scene and then place those shadow lights accordingly. So here right now, I'm just going to place non-shadows for these because these aren't that important. They're just basic torches or basic lamps. And I don't really need the attention here. So, but right here, this is more of an active area. There's actually an NPC here. So this NPC is, uh, from what I'm seeing here, is set to this marker. So I'm guessing they're going to be sitting here when <laughs> you come into the cell. So here I'm going to put a firelight because I feel like that contrast is going to come in or that shadow is really going to draw attention when the player comes into the cell. So here I'm going to actually place a shadow light. And expand it a little bit artificially. <laughs> Not too much though, because we still want it to be believable. Um, uh, one thing with shadow lights, you can't have them off in here. It's going to cause issues unless it is designed in a way where it also has back faces. Then you can put them in there, because then it can like shine through like cracks like a lot of the lamps in skyrim have back faces and you can kind of put a shadow light in there it'll cast like the railing that if whether you like that or not it's up to you that's a very personal preference thing some designers like it some designers don't 
Uh, let me give an example of what I mean by this is going to cast a shadow. If I get a farmer here, the old reliable scale NPC. If I get a farmer here, increase the brightness so you guys can see a little bit more. So you can see this shadow that he's casting here. So when the player comes in, they're going to see that. And he's just going to be sitting, whatever NPC it is. They're going to see this, if they're sitting or standing, they're going to see this NPC moving here. And I think that's going to give a lot of life to the scene. So I'm just going to keep that there. All right, another area where I want to draw focus is this chest area. And you're going to see that once I place the shadow light here, this is really going to pop out. And this really screams for the player's attention because of the the shadow to light contrast that shadow lights have. That, that's what they're really good for doing, shadow lights. It's just creating this contrast in the scene. So here, as you can see, let me turn off the markers so you can see a little bit more clearly. Get rid of that one. This guy. I'm going to increase the brightness just a little bit. This guy's really sticking out. This, there's no way that someone's going to miss that, unless they're like speedrunning or something. It's obviously there. <laughs> you can see it. There's a lot of contrast in that area. It's really drawing the eye. So that's mm -hmm. probably going to be... If you can't see it already, I mean, it's pretty obvious that it's there even without the light, but that obviously screams for the player's attention mm -hmm. with the light. That's really what you're trying to do when you're placing your lights. It's just putting them in places where the player is going to where it's going to catch attention to the player. That's what shadow lights are used for. And Bethesda understood this right here, which is why I kept this light here. They understood that this casted doorway shadow as well as this item here. This item here isn't just placed randomly. That was on purpose. You can and you can tell it's on purpose. It looks very cinematic. This is really catching the eye. When you go through this cave here, this is not missable. This is it's obviously there and it screams for your attention. <laughs> so that I kept there. Because I felt like it was a really good example of what I'm talking about with shadow lights. So so far I've used three. Um, so I have budget for one more, one more important one. So if I go over here to this room, and if I look around, the main light source in this room is the chandelier. That's the big one. So I probably, since that's the main light, and there isn't really anything else that I need to draw focus on, I'm just going to place the shadow light there. It makes a lot of sense. If anybody's putting any questions in the chat, I'll look at them right now. Give me a minute. But yeah, this chandelier is one of the main light source of the room. There's nothing else I need to draw attention to, so I'm just going to put it here. And this is going to be the shadow light of the room. And this is going to be a good use of my budget because of the fact that it's going to cast shadows throughout the room. That's also one thing that you want to consider as well. Is this a good use of your budget? Is it going to affect the scene in a, in a good way, in a way that it actually makes sense? So in this case, I say yes. I'm just going to adjust. And this is casting shadows now throughout the scene. And the rest mm -hmm. of these candlelights, they just, they're, since they're very small and not important, I'm just going to put some non-shadow lights here. Scale them down. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, there's only so, <laughs> that's a really good question. I don't think did I mention it? I don't think so. Uh, I, I think I forgot. But uh, there's a limit to four shadow lights per cell. And that is, so when I'm saying budget, I mean, like, how many shadow lights can I use from now? You know, like, so I used two. Now I only have a budget of two more, is what I'm basically saying. Whenever I refer to the budget, 
That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Thank you, spell. <laughs> yeah. So here, these are very basic candle lights. I'm just going to grab some fire lights, non-shadow ones, place them down. I don't recommend using the default candle. Uh, the default candle, default fire lights. They're kind of shit. This one, I don't know how I feel about this one. It's kind of moving a little bit too much, so I might find another one. I think the the Sidna Mine one is really good. That's another really good one. I'm just going to do Orange Flicker. This is a really good one. It doesn't move too much. I'm going to scale this down, put it down here. this maybe i can expand it just a little bit more just to light up the scene right there uh this one i'm gonna replace oh what am i clicking there you Uh, if you prefer that, yeah, go ahead. I say go wild. Right now, I'm just kind of hastily placing everything. Uh, but yeah, if you want to, try it out. See how it works for your scene. If it's, you know, if it's not, then it does, you know, there's no harm done. So here, this is probably what it would look like. I'm guessing this is what you mean. This is a little crazy. Um... This could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. It depends on your scene. So, like, if you're trying to make something where the shadows are really just screaming for your attention and you want it to be very dynamic, then you could use this type of light and this type of light positioning on assets. For now, though, I don't think this is what I want for my scene. So, I'm just going to place it maybe here where the light chandelier is there. Or down here. This is pretty standard. Somewhere around here is probably the ideal for this type of scene. But if you want a more dramatic scene, then yeah, definitely go crazy. And then after I'm done placing this these lights, I'm just going to go and read questions. And hopefully you guys have questions for me. Yeah, this. All right, let's read. This. Does anybody have any questions? For lights. For I question. answered them. I stole them from you. I stole them from you. Oh, no. Why'd you steal them from me? What am I supposed to talk about? <laughs> yes, uh, Martin. Uh, that Please would fight. be an option. Doesn't look too good since it leaves a giant circular shadow on the floor. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really the thing. You have to look at the asset, how it's going to cast. You might like it. You might not. It's very, It's very much a personal preference. Uh, I think this is the default. Yeah, this is the default. You can see how that looks. It looks very digital. I don't like the way these lights look. These are probably like the worst lights in the game. So I tend to use these. They just have a bit of a warmer characteristic. They actually look like fire. It's less digital. It's not too orange, though. That's That's the thing. You don't want to go too orange. You just want it to be enough that it looks natural. Mm. Oh. I think I forgot the enchantment table. There's some torches. There's some candles here. So let's put some. You can. Depending on how many. Assets being lit by an Omni light. You can light an asset. Generally. With only four lights. And that. Is a limit that you don't want to pass. Because then you're going to get a lot of light flickering. Same thing with the shadow lights. So. As a general rule, we say three instead, lights per asset, because you obviously want to take into account the player torches, the player magic effects, all those emit, um, all those spawn in in an instant instance uh, lights into the game. Every time you're doing any sort of magic effect, dragon fire, it spawns in a light every single time that happens. So you really want to 
only use three per object when possible. And it's, and then double check it in game, run around with the torch, make sure there's no flickering on any assets. What that would look like, let me just give an example. Let me take an asset out of here. So here's here's a little asset. Oh, nope. Well, let me get the light again. Okay. Here's an as here's a, an example of what that light limit is gonna look like. So this is four. This is three lights. Now we're at four. This is the maximum. Once I add another one, it's gonna stop affecting, or at least it should. In game, it will. Let me refresh. Creation gets weird, the editor. It doesn't exactly work like the way the game does, so that's why it's always important to test your cell. Right now, for some reason, I can place more scale than the light. five. Scale the light. If you scale the light, it's going to start affecting it. <coughs> also, increase the fade. That's going to start affecting it. There's scale. Let me add a different type of light. Maybe that'll demonstrate it better. Okay, let's do <laughs> Let's see the default candle light this time and see how that... Oh, no, it's still light. That is really confusing. Uh, I don't know why that's not causing issues in the editor. But it normally does. Um, I guarantee that this is going to start flickering in-game. It's not showing it in the editor for some reason. But that's just the way the creation kit is. It's a very buggy mess. Let me see here. Try this one. Okay. There has to be a limit. Let me... There you go. Okay. give an example orange is there anybody else asking oh here here's a good example as you can see this for some reason it didn't do that immediately but as you can see this light is no longer affecting the mesh and this is what's going to happen it's i lights are going to stop uh, affecting meshes so like a lot of the times this is really lit but if it was more in shadow and it was being affected by four different lights if you add another light source it's just going to be black and the rest is going to be lit up I don't know if you've seen that bug in Skyrim where the on the roads, if you're running around with torches, sometimes the roads are like black in some areas and then not black in others. That's kind of how it would look. Um, so yeah, that's probably that's the best example I can give you right now. You're definitely going to run into that issue yourselves when you do level design. Um, but for some reason, it's really hard to demonstrate right now. I don't know why. Is there any other questions? Thanks for answers. I see flicker. It's barely noticeable, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah, you. that's, that's one of the things. You just got to go in-game and test it out. Because in-game is the real-world scenario. That's where it's actually... That's where it actually matters, you know. <laughs> if anything's going to break, it's going to break in-game. At the end of the day. But those are just the general rules. Um, just to repeat what I said. If anybody wasn't here. For non-important light sources. Use non-shadow lights. Make sure you're only affecting four lights per mesh. Or using four lights per mesh. Stick to three though. Three is a good rule to go by. Um. Shadow lights should be placed in important areas and areas that are going to affect the scene the most. Like this here, chandelier, it's affecting the entire scene, casting shadows throughout the entire scene. So that's like the best use of my budget. Put shadow lights where, <laughs> put shadow lights where it's going to catch the eyes, the eye, the player's attention. It's part of level design. You want to lead the player. If you want to make sure the player doesn't get lost in a dungeon, place a light or even a shadow light to cause even more contrast to catch the player's eye tell him that he's supposed to go here people will follow lights they're like moths <laughs> if anybody have seen the moth lamp mean that's exactly how players are in game they are attracted to lights and they will go where the lights tell them to go subconsciously i mean whether they they are aware of it or not some people are aware of it some people aren't <laughs> angry moth noises <laughs> yeah 
in an area, a torch would do nothing. Yes, um, if it's well, not in an area, on an asset. So like an object, a three D. So like this object right here. You see this this rock here. This rock can only be affected by four lights, whether it's shadow lights or omni lights. So the general rule is to only have three lights affecting this asset at all times so that the fourth light can be a player generated light you know like a magic spell a torch a dragon you know other things so that's that's the general rule for these types of these levels in other engines it's not like that i know it's not unreal sorry no nanite here no lumen but uh <laughs> We work with what we got. Bethesda gave us this, so but we still love their games. We love their universe. So this is just the the downside to that. You know, you're just gonna have to deal with this and try to use that. That's why it's like kind of important to kind of study, maybe take reference of real caves, see what's the most important light, like light source in a cave or something. What's gonna catch the eye? And just use your budget as best as possible because that is that's gonna make the game look as next gen as, as it possibly can. The light is a very lighting is a very big deal. Even though this is not a very technical guide, I have another one that is very technical that you could watch. Uh this is just basic light placement, but this light placement is really important and these sort of things that you have to consider is really important. You can't just place these lights anywhere. The dragger can only light so many lights anyway. <laughs> um, any other questions? Please feel free. I have nothing else to sh to really do. I already. I just it. have one thing to say. This just one game. thing. I just one thing to say. Uh, everybody, I really apologize for the uh, video quality. I don't have enough time, you know, like it was it was just all of a sudden I had to take it, a fill-in for Shio Ibarra. So I really apologize if, like, the quality isn't good enough. So uh, in a few days, I will be uploading a high-quality version, and I'll be sending it over to Pat so we can upload it on the AU channel. Hope you guys can bear with me. Yeah, man, it, it's fine. I'm sure that the video that you did is really good, even though my, not that many people were able to hear it. But you're going to post it on YouTube. You're going to boost the volume. So yep. everything should be good. And people are going to be able to enjoy that. So it's it's fine. In fact, most of the viewers, I think, are after the fact, right? I don't think that many people, at least not the majority of server, come to the atoms. It's only a select That's few true. people. So yep. most of the people are going to see the video anyway. So... It, it should be fine. But yeah, back to the point. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions while I still have you guys for another, like, 20 minutes? I think, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Oh. Yeah, that's about right. I, I've got a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, what, what you got? Um, so I noticed in your caves, the lighting was like a little bit dark and like moody. So how much do you prioritize, um, I guess the mood of the scene versus, um, the player being able to see? So like, I guess like if there are enemies in a scene, you would kind of want more lighting. Um, yeah. But if you're just passing through, I would imagine having less lighting is okay, especially because then you can kind of guide them with uh, the omni lights or, or the uh, the shadow lights, I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, yeah, it, like you said, that's exactly, that's a perfect example. How many people are going to be here? How many, how many enemies are there? Right here, there's only one enemy, so it's not so important here. But in a bigger, in a bigger cell with a lot more enemies, if this room had like Draugr or something, then I would up the ambient light and that's a template thing. If you saw my other lecture, I can just run through it very quick since you're the one here asking questions. So right now, let's see, ambient color, directional color. Here, I'll just apply these myself. So right now, these are the settings for, so it's relatively black. This is actually a vanilla template. This is a very dark one compared to the rest of the game. So, um, 
yeah, if you wanted to up the up the visibility a little bit, then you could go for a lighter color. This is very close to black. So what I would do here is I'll set my ambient if you want to do this very quickly. Uh, I can do like a brownish color. Let me around here. A brownish color. I'm going to set that from ambient. And if I apply that, you see the visibility goes up a lot. So, I mean, it really depends on, on you. Like, I try to have as much sort of cin the, that cinematic feel as much as possible without sacrificing too much visibility. So what I would do is probably a color similar to this. So not exactly black, but definitely a little bit darker. So something like this is what I would go for. Maybe just a tad bit darker. Actually, like around there. It's gonna set that like this. This is probably as far as I would go. And this is what I'm doing for Skype Bolivian right now. Um if you don't know I'm a part of the Skype Bolivian project. And I'm uh currently doing some templates for them. But like when I do the templates for Skype Bolivian, this is definitely uh, what I try to aim for, which we, we want, a we want some contrast, but we don't want to take too much visibility away. Um, so yeah, that's that's really the thing. And prioritizing either or, I mean, it just depends on your personal preference, man, and also the playability of the scene, like you said, enemies, um, being able to see around, <laughs> things like that. Uh, that that's really it. Um, I yeah, know that that was super helpful. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, I've got a follow up if if no one else has another one. But um, when you start, sure. uh, when you start, uh, like lighting a scene, do you s start with the lighting template or do you just jump right into, you start lighting things it, and kind of figuring out where lights go? Depends yeah, on your depends workflow. Depends on your for workflow, me, but it also depends on if your project, like if you're working for a project obviously use their templates if they have them or ask for permission to make your own. But, um, so yeah, you could start with the template. You can start with lights. Like a lot of the times we could do like maybe a black scene, just no ambient light and just lights only and then add template after and add ambient light after or uh, the other way around. Sometimes you don't want to add ambient light to the template. Sometimes you want to do it the Oblivion approach or like the old style game approach where they put ambient Omni lights. If you looked at a, a lot of the Oblivion scenes, they had these ambient lights, uh, but there were Omni lights. They were very like dim, but they added a lot of uh, color to the scene because they didn't have the lighting templates that we do in Skyrim. So they had to place a lot of these amb ambient Omni lights that were dedicated for that purpose. So you could light a scene that way if you want. If it works, it works, you know. So it, it really just depends on your workflow, your project, uh, whatever you prefer. <laughs> All right, thank day. you. Thank you. That was, that was also helpful. <laughs> uh, any other questions? How do lights take priority if an asset can be lit and there's a fifth light far away? Does it not light because it's farthest away? Um... No, I, I don't think so. I think it, it still it still is gonna cause flickering, Pat. Uh as if it's affecting that asset. If it's far away and it's like not touching the asset whatsoever, then that's not even a part of the limit. Because every single mm -hmm. mesh scene has a four light limit. So it's not like a, a the whole scene as one mesh. No, it's not. It's per reference per asset. So everything in Skyrim is made on a grid, like you have all these tile sets all these separate meshes. So every single mesh is going to have a four light limit. Uh, I don't know if that clears up your question, Pat. Uh... <laughs> so in the dun in dungeons, where is that fine line between Doberman needs to be able to use his torch and Doberman kind of needs to be able to see without a torch? Should we make them darker with the expectation that Dover Boy has mage light? Slash torch, or should we make them lighter because torches are extra? Um, I guess it depends on your on your project and your game. Like for Oblivion, a lot of the chests drop a lot of torches, so we could go a little bit darker because it, it's kind of expected for people to have torches. 
Uh, I don't know if any of you guys played Oblivion, but a lot of the chest drops are all torches. Like, I, I was playing the other day, and I got, like, five torches in a chest. So here, we're expecting for people to have this stuff. So it's not it's not really uh, too crazy to go a little bit dark. But we do want it to be visible even without, so that they can, you know, be a stealth archer or something like that. Because that everybody's a stealth archer in Skyrim, because that's, like, the best combat. <laughs> So, so yeah. Sorry for the people who don't like stealth archers. What Isaac means, what Isaac, what Isaac means is, is that always YouTube try. Uh, yeah, I guess like, but then again, people always have the brightness slider in the game, so they could always turn that up. Uh, but we do try to make sure that it's visible. Yes, we do. Like your uh, can I just say something? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Like like your cave layouts and and other uh, aspects of your level, always take the player in consideration. Uh, be it lighting or anything, always take always take uh, the player's consider uh, uh, consideration of the player himself. Always keep that in mind. It's really important, and it, it does apply to lighting too. Hey, and Martin, if you wanna if you wanna light your your caves like Dark Souls, go ahead, man. I'm sure people will love your mods, so <laughs> go ahead, do it. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of getting scared. Uh, that that's another thing. If you if you're trying to scare people, that's that's one way to go. I always say it's the user's <laughs> fault to a point. You know what? Sure, why not? Um, but yeah, you visibility is a very it really depends. It really does. I I can't have, like, a solid answer for everybody. Oh, yeah, you should always make them visible. Because, no, like, what if you do want to scare somebody, you know? Like, what what if you have a unique item in your mod, like a torch or, like, a mage light that follows you throughout the entire thing, you know, that it never goes away? You know, then you could make your cave darker because that, that's an infinite light resource, you know? So... It really depends. It really depends on a cell by cell basis. It becomes over game, especially your levels. <laughs> to be honest, I do. If I had enough knowledge and time, yeah. Well, man, um, I'd say yeah. If you do have enough time, go ahead and do it. It's definitely level design is really fun. It's a very enjoyable thing. Uh, don't let anybody else say otherwise. It's enjoyable. It's really fun. It's really fun to create these little scenes for the player to experience. And, you know, people will just walk in and be like, oh, my God. I guess, you know, I could give an example of my whole contrast thing that I keep on talking about. Let me, since I'm loaded up into the Sky Oblivion build beforehand, I can give you an example of one of the areas where I created a lot of contrast in Sky Oblivion. So this is... Black Rock Caverns. This is a the pirate dungeon from Oblivion. I don't know if you guys remember this, but um, as you can see, this has a lot of contrast. Uh, let me just turn off the fog because it's not rendering properly in the kit. This scene has a lot of contrast. You can see the silhouette of the of the boat against the effects. When Orange's video gets uploaded to YouTube, you can find out how to do this. Um, or you can look at my other lighting lighting tutorial i i covered it briefly there as much as i could yeah that silhouette is really sticking out against that beam that's like a very high contrast point <laughs> but also the shadow light above the scene you have a very we have the cone light here or the point light or sorry not the point light the spotlight whatever you want to call it here it's being casted i could have casted this top down without any of the vines but the thing is, I added these vines on purpose. They're not just to look natural. They also serve a very important lighting purpose. Because they they create a lot of contrast. And it, it really just, again, that contrast is going to really draw the eye of the player. And that's really what my, that, that's what my job is right now when I'm lighting my levels. I, I really try to make these beautiful scenes when I can. So let me just get rid of all these veg 
all these little vines very quick so I can show you what the scene looks like after. Let me get rid of this. This, oh my god, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, but they're all used to sell that effect. All really important. All right, let me go back down. As you can see, without those vines, it's not the same. It looks okay, but it's not the same. You're not getting those kind of like lines, those shadow lines on this uh, little bridge here. You're, you're not getting that casted throughout the scene. It's a lot brighter. And if you want this effect to be very bright, if you want that bright effect, then yeah, you could do this. And it looks actually okay, you know, but it, I really want it to have a very big difference because it's supposed to be very deep down. And this is not supposed to be very high up. It's a very large cavern. So you, I, I wanted to have that sort of deep sort of look. So I added the roots here, and you can see the big difference that they make. They, they really stick out. But it's also very visible, and this is an example of one of the templates that I made for Sky Oblivion. It's still very visible because there's a lot of enemies here, but there's also enough. It's dark enough that I can create contrast moments like this. So this is the type of stuff, like if you learn these basic fundamentals, like this is the type of shit that you can create. It's very, it's not really that complicated. If you have the vision, you can do it. It's the, the technical know-how is not, there's not a lot to learn. It's very, it's very easy, very basic. And if you are having trouble lighting your scenes, you can ask me. Question, uh, you can ask me a question here on the AU. Um, <laughs> Isaac the Wizard, just just message me, or um, or you could just pop a message in the Level Design mm -hmm. channel. I'm sure me or other people will message you and respond to what you any questions that you have. Um, you could look at reference as well. Look at caves in real life. How are they lit? How what type of light sources do they have? Natural light sources, things like that. That that's all that all goes into account when you're lighting caves and interiors. You gotta just look in real life, take references, you know. Um see what what are the natural sort of sort light sources in a scene. This is such a good look. When you light something from the bottom for effect. Would when would you light something from the bottom for effect? Are you talking about like uh like going down up? So instead of going casting down, casting up. Okay, yeah, you would. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you could do that. I'm sure. I'm sure that has actually been done in Skyrim. I believe there was grates in the Wift Riften uh, Ratway, and they casted lights coming up, or maybe that was enhanced lights and effects. Yeah, like you could do something like this. Like here, I had an example because I was originally going to show this as an example, but I changed my mind. I mean, Orange decided otherwise. But if you want to take something like this, like if you have grates, you go like this. Here, I'm just going to duplicate this just to make it easy. Oh, okay. If you had like this and you wanted to cast up like that, that this would be a situation where you would want to cast from down below. Like maybe you have a fire below grates or something. Or whatever these call these fences, you do that for this effect, and maybe you have the player walking mm -hmm. on these sort of metal things. It looks it looks really nice. So this is one mm -hmm. of the situations where you want to cast up. Also, if you want like a sort of divine being, maybe you have like one of the gods, the several gods that are in Skyrim, the Daedra or Adra, depending on the project that you're doing. You want to have that unhold that sort of unearthly effect you could do that as well have a really bright bloomy scene with a light coquette casting from below and uh, you could have that very unearthly effect mm -hmm. so those there's are, also that's probably a moment where you want to do that go ahead orange there's also a little trick i'd like to teach you if you want to make uh, the mystic interiors like everybody there's a small trick i want to show you all is it get a chandelier get a chandelier okay yep uh, let's just go back to what I was working on. Yeah, it's a little niche trick, but it's really good if anyone wants to make domestic interiors. 
Okay, chandelier right here. Yeah, right here. Delete, delete the Somnium light. Yeah, we don't want that. Okay. Yeah. Show me. All right, now, now add a spotlight, a shadow casting spotlight. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> uh, uh, which one? Which one? Because you, you obviously know, because you've used this before. Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually really. I, I already know what you're doing here. That's good. I like it. Use any, use any, use any. Just any. Uh, it doesn't matter. Do you have one that I can go to? Like, what's your go to? Has to be Shadow. All right. Wait, wait. I'm going to put Got to be a spotlight. This one, default torch. I'll use the default torch for now. Okay. All right. Is it oh. a Shadow Caster? Yeah, it's a Shadow Caster. All right. Flip it now. Rotate it. Flip it. No, oh, no, no. Rotate flip it. it. Rotate it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Take it down. Take it down, down, down. All right, increase the intensity a little bit and scale it down. Increase the intensity. Yeah, a little bit, okay. just a little bit. All right, and scale it down. Scale it down. Okay. Sorry. Scale, up, scale up a little bit more, just a little bit more, slightly. That. Right now, drag it down. Yeah, now drag it down in the Z axis. Yeah. All right, look at look at what you could achieve, guys. It's a, like mimics like how chandeliers really uh, light stuff. If you want to achieve realism in your scene. Yeah, this is fair. That's fair. Definitely, very fair. And then you can add another light. And then you can, add a non -shadow you can add a non-shadow one to the splash. Yeah, you can add a non-shadow one or a shadow one. It depends, I guess. Um, let me add <clears throat> the DB firelight again. Mm -hmm. So I could go shadow again, because why not? <laughs> now, this is very expensive, though. So you have to consider, is this worth it or not? Yep, really expensive. It is very expensive, but... Uh, Definitely, it's a cool effect. Definitely, mm. you could have that cast up, but also the you can have the actual room light as well. So that, that's pretty cool. Yep. Definitely. Um, and then, like you were saying, put a non shadow, a non shadow one, so like yeah, a regular for the omni. Flash. For the uh, for the uh, to simulate uh, light light bounce. So put it put it uh, above the chandelier, the non shadow. Non shadow. Above the chandelier. Yeah, above the chandelier. Slightly, slightly more above. Higher, just slightly higher. Yeah, high, 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 up, up, up. Okay. Yep. And now, like scale it up immensely, but like lower its fade. Yep, lower its fade as much as you can. Yeah, heater. That's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, Give it that little cool. ambient, ambient style, you know? Yeah, it's definitely very unique. Uh, Ooh, although you are sacrificing yeah. shadows across the screen, but it's fine. I mean, if you, but if you, if you don't you prefer this, if you prefer this, then yeah. yeah. There's also another way. What you could do is you could go to your lighting template, for example. Let's say you added a orange uh, spotlight and you like did it the same way I did. You could go to your uh, lighting template and change the color of the roof, the Z values, to, to orange. So it'll simulate light, light bouncing in a different way without, without like, wasting your I'll budget. That's a really so, way. so up is positive, guys. So let me yep. do this. Let me go up. Give it a little Orange. Bit. That is orange. We can go a little mm -hmm. bit more. Little little niche trick. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I guess it's up to you guys. You guys can choose whichever way you want. Um, definitely both very valid. Although this is a little bit more expensive, but it's up to you. If you have the budget for it, go ahead. Um, let me see. Did anybody Riften did that? Yeah, Riften did do it with a in a lot of Areas. Let me let me go to Rift and Ratway to show an example of where another example of where Bethesda did the whole. I think about it. They did it with 
Oh, wait, what are you talking about exactly? Because <laughs> uh, for contrast, like the whole casting things, they did it here. In fact, I don't know if you guys have ever seen any of Camel's lore videos or any of uh, any other, you know, Skyrim YouTubers videos or Elder Scrolls YouTubers. You've probably seen this shot a lot because this is one of the of very beautiful cinematic scenes, especially with Eel FX. This is a very beautiful scene. Eel FX adds a whole bunch of beams here. It looks very gorgeous with E and B on. And yeah, that's because Bethesda, whoever the level designer was working on this, they really understood these basic things when it comes to lighting uh, levels. As you can see, it's casting a shadow. And that's actually where I took the great from earlier. <laughs> I was looking at, at this earlier just to see uh, choosing between levels. And this is a really good example of Bethesda doing it. Another good example is, again, in the Riften Ratway. Let me go here, Riften. Ratway 01. Right here is another really good example. Over here. I'm sure you guys recognize this as well. This is another contrast area that Bethesda created. That's really nice. It's not perfect, but it is really nice and really good. It, I think they did a pretty decent job at this uh, with this area. Um, here they put it off to the side, I'm guessing, because they wanted to light more of the scene to give it a more of that. Because this engine doesn't have global illumination or light bounce, so I'm guessing they wanted to simulate light bounce without adding another light. So if I would have added this here, right now it's not showing it, but in game it would have gotten cut off by these uh faces here, so it would have just been like a cone. So I'm guessing the Bethesda employee working here did this so that you can have more light in this room. So that's a, I guess that's a cool technique that you could use with the Riften tile set if you, or with any other tile set. If you have these, uh, if you have these back faces cold out, definitely could use that to your advantage. Is there any? I think it's time, yeah. God damn. I was, I was hoping you'd cut me off. <laughs> it's been a blast, uh, guys and gals. Right. Really enjoyed being with you. All right, thank you guys for sticking around. Sorry for going into whoever's time it was a minute. Uh, I'll catch you guys later. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. Have a good one, guys and gals. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping yeah. Pat usually cuts people off, so I was like waiting to hear the words. Uh, 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 uh,